it's my goal to keep expanding my worldview and open my mind to different perspectives. Just like I said in my Mexico video, I think it's very important to break false narratives we have about the world and continuously revisit how we think. So in today's video, I wanted to show you a bit around the city I've been living in for a few months now, Montevideo, Uruguay. When I watched movies as a kid that were set in South America, they always depicted massive jungles, people living off the land, and incredible animals all over the place. And I've never really noticed people romanticize cities in South America like I've seen in Europe. And not that I think we should romanticize countries in either continent, but it is interesting to see how countries in South America are viewed versus countries in Europe. Just like my experience in Mexico, people usually exaggerated or emphasized the danger while ignoring the beauty, culture, and the positives. So, for the sake of seeing the world through different perspectives, I thought I'd show you around the city that I've been so lucky to call home for the past few months. Some background. Europeans first arrived to Uruguay in 1516, but it wasn't until 1680 that the Portuguese began to settle here. In 1726, the Spanish took control of the territory and founded the capital city of Montevideo. The country fought to resist takeover from both Brazil and Argentina. Finally, after years of battle, in 1820, a treaty proclaimed that Uruguay was a separate state. Most Uruguayans have ancestry from both Spain and Italy, and those two countries have had a lot of influence on the culture of Uruguay. And you can see the European influences in the architecture, specifically here in Ciudad Vieja. This is the oldest part of the city, and in my opinion, the most European looking. It's all so beautiful. During the week, this pedestrian street behind me, called Serendi, is filled with street vendors, street musicians, and businessmen. This area of town is really one of my favorites. It just feels so alive and full of people, and all the buildings are so pretty. Today I'm filming a video showing people around Montevideo and having grown up here yourself, what is a, a stereotype that you've heard about South America? That everything will kill you, <laughs> that it's always hot, we don't have winters, mm -hmm. it's all tropical. And since you've lived in the US and you've like seen movies that were depicted from a US perspective of South America, do you think that anything is not accurate? At least from my perspective, I come from like Uruguay so I can't speak for like Brazil or like Colombia but it's all fake, like all of it is wrong. <laughs> I think it's just portrayed in media as something that's not and people are scared of it. And yeah, people just don't know about it. So we came to a cafe called Culto Cafe here in Ciudad Vieja. Uh, the cafe is actually really cool. It's inside a really old building. I think you were saying that the building is from like the early 1800s maybe. It's beautiful on the outside. And just like the cafe, many businesses in Ciudad Vieja reside on the ground floor of historic buildings. To me, it's one of the things that makes this part of town so interesting. Next, we're seeing something that isn't necessarily historically significant like Ciudad Vieja, but it is famous among Uruguayans. La Feria de Trista Narvaja is a large street market starting on Avenida Trista Narvaja, but the market spans dozens of blocks. The market dates all the way back to 1909, starting only with fruit and vegetable stalls, but the Feria quickly diversified and became the large and famous market it is today. The Feria is gigantic and it can be a little overwhelming, but it honestly is possible to spend hours here just going up and down every block, looking at all the stands. Okay, this is your first time at the video, right? Yeah, it is. How do you like it so far? I like it. It's really nice. There's a lot of uh, different things, weird things. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, but I like it. And you can find everything you want. Yeah, it's a little chaotic, right? Yeah, it is. There's a lot of people, but it's amazing though. And I love that everyone is wearing something different. There's a lot of different styles and you can get everything you want, like in the market. So that's amazing. And I got a vegetarian burger thing. That was good. <laughs> Really good, but I didn't buy anything though, but it's because... I mean, we still have time. We're still, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going through, yeah. Oh my god, I need a picture of that. Those are, uh... They're Brazilian avocados, right? Those ones, yeah, yeah. After being here for some time, I realized just how little people really know about South America, and I guess how little I knew before coming here. Like I said earlier, when I was a kid, learning about South America and seeing depictions of it in movies, it's like they grouped the whole continent together. 
and in school we learned about the continent as a whole, not about each individual country or region. They omit so much of the culture and beauty and told us watered down versions of what life is really like here. I think it's a very common thing in the US to refer to continents instead of individual countries. It might have something to do with the fact that the US takes up a large portion of North America, so it's hard for people there to understand that in South America, for example, even though the countries are relatively close in proximity, they are all so different from one another. To me, Montevideo seems more like three or four different towns, all like smushed together into one. There's parts of town, kind of like Ciudad Vieja, which are a lot older and have more of a city center vibe. And then there's parts of town like this, which is a lot quieter. The architecture is completely different. And the way that the streets are designed is also different as well. Would you say Montevideo sometimes feels like it's like four different towns in one? I can get that, yeah. Like Ciudad Vieja. Later we went down to the beach, which always kind of feels like it's just on the road, and I guess it sort of is. Since being in Montevideo, I don't think I've been more than 5 kilometers from the beach at any given point. Do you want to, do you want to explain about the water? It's, so it's a mix between salt water and fresh water. A lot of rivers here have clay and like deposits of other minerals that make it brown. And then it ends up coming down to the coast here, and this is like a peninsula. It, it, it like feeds into the, the ocean. So this is like a peninsula where all the water from the river comes. So this is a mix between river water and ocean water. The river Rio de la Plata, River Plate, goes all the way to Punta del Este, and after that it's only ocean. The more east you get, the less brown it gets. So Buenos Aires water looks like chocolate milk, <laughs> but then maybe Piriápolis, which is like pretty close to Punta del Este, is like usually lighter and like salty and like nice. Uruguay is really not on the radar for a lot of people, and I think that's why it's important to remember how much of the world is still out there to discover. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most beautiful places aren't what we see online, and your favorite city or country might not be one that you expected or even knew existed. And next we visited Escarmusa, an antique 1930s house converted into a library and a cafe. The library houses a large and beautiful bookstore toward the front of the converted house, and in the back, a patio with a large cafe. The library is beautiful, and it's definitely worth visiting if you're ever in the area. I ended up ordering a coffee, and they actually make drama milk in-house, and it was pretty good. Okay, before I end this video, I want to say that there is a lot I like about Montevideo. The buildings, the people, the food, the lifestyle, but I don't want to make it seem like the city doesn't have any flaws and that there isn't anything that can't be improved. And honestly, I could make a whole video on the things I don't like about Montevideo, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it to one. And the sidewalk is a perfect example. The sidewalk is made from these like tiles. Mm -hmm. I think they're like clay, but some of them become like unstuck or unglued and then they all just fall apart. And I literally just fell. I was looking at the house and then I fell. Now, to end this video off, I want to say that before coming to Uruguay, I really didn't know anything about it. I'd heard the name, but aside from that, nothing. And even though I had never been here or heard anything about Uruguay, I still had an unconscious idea in my head about what it would be like. It's so easy to have a fixed idea about the world, but that's why it's important to look past some of these simple narratives we're told about places and see them for ourselves. I never would have thought I'd be living here in Montevideo, but all these years later, here I am. And if you made it this far into the video, I want to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. I want to say a big thank you for watching. Fuck. What was I going to say, Thomas? Pretty cool. Uh, we're here in a uh, part of... Fuck. Hold on. Not judging.